From Arkham to Archons, nerds like a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, and that is correcting people. This is Um Actually. On today's episode, we have Maggie Mae Fish. Hello! We have Jessica Ross. Hello! And John Goots Gutierrez. Hello. Hello. Hello to everyone. <laughs> uh, tag yourself. What level of excited are you? Are you a Maggie? Are you a Jess? Are you Goots? Thanks so much for coming on to the show. Again, all of you, all returning players, you know how this game works. You probably know how this game works, but in case you don't, uh, these are a stack of questions. They are incorrect statements about the things that you know and love. It's up to you to correct me by preceding your correction with the phrase, um, actually, if you don't, I won't give you the point. You can interrupt me whenever you want. This weekend, well, the weekend we're shooting is when Avengers Endgame comes out. By the time we actually release this, it will have been out for several months. Does anyone want to make any wild predictions? I think Tony Stark is going to say something sarcastic. No. <laughs> I think he's going to be a naughty boy. Put it, put it on the bingo card. And Pepper's going to go, you cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> is she dead? Pepper? Yeah. I don't think so. We don't, but we totally could have a question of just like, just who, <laughs> like, who's still alive at this point? Is it's, John it's Favreau? Like, who <laughs> lives? I want to know what normal people are left. Yeah. Like, you know, just like, how many Gap stores are still open? Yeah. <laughs> Half of them. <laughs> well, we'll see if Jess is right. And everyone feel ready? Jump right into yeah. it. Oh, great. Oh my god. Buzzers in hand. <laughs> Here is our first statement. In the first season of Rick and Morty, we discover that different versions of Rick Sanchez from across the multiverse have joined forces to form the Council of Ricks, a direct reference to a similar storyline in Marvel Comics, where Tony Stark discovers alternate versions of himself have formed the Council of Starks. Goots. Um, actually, I think it was the Council of Reed Richards. It was, yes. Ooh, <laughs> uh, wow. It was technically the Council of Reeds, but yes, it was yeah. Reed Richards, uh, 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 the other Marvel, other resident genius. Yeah. Uh, um, who, who is he? What does he do? Um, he's pretty fantastic, I would say. He's like a Mr. Fantastic? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> what, who, and who is that? Oh, he's the leader of the Fantastic Four. Oh, I know him. He did yeah. see he's Invisible hot. Woman. <laughs> yeah, okay. Was he hot in the movie one? Yeah, to what? me. Just to me. <laughs> Whoa, I would yeah. think out of the whole crew. I would take the rock man over him. <laughs> oh. All right, we, we can debate this later. <laughs> I can't tell whether you were saying that as if you were like, Look, oh, I'd even take the thing, or if you're like, no, the thing can get it. I... <laughs> Most like big creatures in those worlds, I do like. I like the beast. I like the Hulk. You just want to uh, be like he's picked the up and the least held. hot of all those, though. I think I do want to be held. Yeah. 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 Well, Mr. Fantastic can he can probably stretch some arms and. and... Not can he? Not. On me. <laughs> <laughs> you get away from me with those arms, Mr. Fantastic. I don't think so. <laughs> but yeah, there's a there's a council of uh, council of reeds. That's a point for Goots. And we will move on to our next question here, which is about Lord of the Rings. The lands of Middle-earth include famed locations like Gondor, Moria, the Shire, and Mordor. But the world is vast, and there are other important places in Middle-earth that you may be less familiar with, like Numenor, the Undying Lands, and the Dark Lands. Yes, um, Jess. Um, actually, there are no dark lands. Uh, there are dark lands. Oh, okay. It is perhaps a not great sort of analog to Africa. <laughs> oh, oh, no! Oh, that's... <laughs> 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 already troubling enough that it was all the men of the West were good. Yes. Then, mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Maggie. Um, actually, Mordor's not technically part of... Middle Earth? Uh, Mordor is a part of Middle Earth. All right. Well, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there goes my guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, Numenor is not a part of Middle Earth. That is correct. Uh, uh, you're on the right track, Maggie, with or at least like the, the kind of thing we were doing there. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, Numenor, the Undying Lands, and the Dark Lands are all technically not a part of Middle Earth. Middle uh. Earth is technically speaking the like continent on which most of the action takes place, um, but the world as a whole as a whole is called Arda. Is that right? Arda or no? Sorry, Ambar or Imbar. If you include the sun and the moon as part of this whole thing, <laughs> then it's hard. Oh, um, yeah, uh, so technically speaking, not a part of Middle Earth. Oh. Um, uh, my own eyes glazed over as I was like trying to be like, what is the distinction here? Who lives there? 
at the place you said, Numenor. Numenor? Oh, yeah. It's sort of like a lost civilization uh, of, of men, I believe. It's sort of like kind of like an atlantis kind of thing, where it's like they were, or... Just men? Well, m- men in the <laughs> Tolkien sense, where it's like, we'll use men to refer oh, okay, to everyone. Okay. I was like, uh, <laughs> just men. <laughs> 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 Little boys club. It's, yeah. Men. It's, <laughs> men under the sea. It's like the Amazons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's, like, there's a reason this civilization collapsed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we lasted one generation. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun. Uh, <laughs> but we <laughs> had a play. Yeah. Oh, boy, Bellas, it was good while it lasted. Yeah. Nobody uh, nagging us. <laughs> uh, well, that, uh, that is another point that will go to Goots. Um, and I guess sort of uh, uh, retroactively, we've probably had a bunch of statements on this show that could have been corrected with, that's not technically Middle Earth. But we will not go back in time and fix all those. Uh, we'll just have to be cognizant of that in the future. <laughs> hey, here's a question about Muppets. Two pilots for The Muppet Show aired before the series began in full force. The first, titled The Muppet's Valentine Show, guest starred Mia Farrow and featured Kermit in only a supporting role, singing a song about his courtship of Miss Mousie. The second, titled The Muppet Show Sex and Violence, had no guest star, but featured Kermit stepping into his role as host. Yes, Jess? Um, actually, it wasn't Valentine's Day, it was Christmas. Uh, it was Valentine's Day. Oh, okay. Maggie. Um, actually, it wasn't titled The Muppets Sex and Violence. Weirdly enough, it was titled uh, uh, The Muppet Show Sex and Violence was the second of two pilots for The Muppet Show. What? (laughs) Yeah, I mean... Whoa! (laughs) That's making some big promises for the series that they did not fulfill. There's there's still one guy who was watching based on that and just like, all right, they've introduced a lot of characters. (laughs) Boots. Um... Actually, the first one had Kermit as the host as well? Uh, incorrect. Oh. Incorrect. The correct answer is actually kind of an inverse of yours. The second special, uh, The Muppets Show Sex and Violence, actually featured Kermit even less than the original <laughs> one. He did almost nothing in it. Uh, he uh, had such a small cameo, we couldn't even find the specifics of what he was doing on the show. And just so, you, uh, just in case you want to select uh, to it, Bert from Sesame Street also has a small cameo in mm. The Muppet Show Sex and Violence. Mm. Um, and everything else we said uh, in there is, is true. Well, he was probably having sex. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't <laughs> yeah. on set. Was, yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to be a noises off thing where we see yeah. the on the backstage and it's just a bunch of big pile of Muppets that are just in a big old Muppet orgy. Who's Miss Mouse? Miss Mousy? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Is she as hot as Miss Piggy? Uh, Surely not. Well, she, Surely. Surely. You can't be. Mm-hmm. She was an old-timey mouse character that had like one of those like mob caps. And all through the first season of The Muppets, she would do a lot of duets with them. She would just come out. Yeah. She really didn't do much else on the a show. A little hat like Ma Otter? Yeah, like that. It was oh. very much just like a very old fashioned Huh. Mouse. What did Kermit see in her? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that point will go to no one. Um, and we'll move on to our. Uh, to a fan question for this episode. This, so this was uh, a question submitted to us uh, by a fan of the show. Uh, this comes to us from Porand. The gods of the Greek and Roman pantheons have different names and personalities, but corresponding roles. For instance, Ares, the Greek god of war, corresponds to the Roman god Mars. Similarly, Hephaestus corresponds to Vulcan, Cronus to Saturn, and Hermes to Mercury. Yes. Uh, um, actually, Hermes and Mercury do not correspond with one another. They do. Oh, come on. <laughs> you had you said that with no confidence, but then still got very upset when it wasn't right. Because I just want a point. <laughs> <laughs> just give it to me. I just need a point before I leave. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. There's still, there's plenty more points to come. Okay. 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 Um, actually, Cronus and Saturn aren't? Related? They are related. They are. They do correspond to okay. each other. Okay. Okay. I just want a point. <laughs> <laughs> um. Actually, it's not that they are different gods. They just have different names for the same god. Um. No, there are the. That's that's perhaps maybe too pedantic even for us. I've broken the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sh- 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 everything yeah. just falls. The look, the walls just start shaking and like collapsing. Um. Uh, no, that is not correct either. 
Um, well, maybe I'll go ahead and call it. You're getting on the right track that the pro issue is with Cronus and Saturn, but it's not that mm. the two are not correspondent to each other because they are sort of analogs to each other. The issue is that Cronus and Saturn are not gods, but titans. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, I, yes, okay. Yes, Jess, you hate this. That would make me mad. <laughs> I don't know why. Sorry for the fan who wrote it. It's <laughs> just like, what? Well, no points for that one. But this will bring us to our first shiny question of the game. Mm. Uh, shiny questions, like shiny Pokemon, worth the same number of points, just a little bit different, a little bit rarer. This is a game called Hear Me Roar. So we are going to, in just a moment, play some sounds for you, for you to see if you can identify them. Whoever can identify the most will get the point. Okay. Um, so the only way no one's walking away with a point here is if none of you identify any. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> uh, today, our theme is robots. So these are uh, robot sounds from TV, film, video games. Uh, we'll see if you can identify the robot just from the robot noises. Let's play that first sound. <laughs> Nere, are you Wonka? Directive? Directive? Um, actually, it's Eva. It is Eva. Eva. That is Eve uh, from Wally. -E. That will go to Jazz. Oh, I Aww. love her. <laughs> <laughs> she is so cute. Mm -hmm. uh, let's play that second sound. Um, actually, that's the probe droid from Empire Strikes Back. That is the Imperial oh. probe droid. One for Jess, one for Goots. Let's play the third one. So please, call now and pledge what you can. Just dial 1-800-LET-ROD. Won't you? Thank you. <laughs> um, that's uh, Crow T. Robot from MST3K? It is Crow T. Robot from <laughs> Mr. Science Theater. Mm -hmm. um, let's play the fourth robot sound. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Goots. I believe that's Boobo from Clash of the Titans. That is Boobo <laughs> from Clash of the Titans. <laughs> oh my god! Um, that's amazing. I thought uh, thought that would be a stumper, but there we go. That's Boobo. Uh, let's play the fifth sound here. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> I believe that's Tweaky from Buck Rogers. That is Tweaky oh from Buck God. Rogers. Oh, you're blowing my mind, Goots. Voice, uh, voiced by Mel Blanc and played by Felix Celia, <laughs> I believe. Great. We don't even need that information, but we'll take it. Um, all right, let's play that last robot sound. Remember that Prometheus was punished uh, by the gods yes. for giving the Um, to Actually, she's from Portal. She's the mom. Oh, my God, what is her name? Uh, oh, fuck. Oh, I don't know her name. I, you know what? It's uh, you're close enough. Uh, she's poor. She's oh god. Yeah. She's got a song she's got about it. Kate. <laughs> um, oh, I don't know her name. Uh, I don't remember her name. It's close <laughs> enough. Yeah, it's close yeah, enough. Yeah, you know where it's coming yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We have this written as turret from Portal 2, but, but it's not actually... Yeah, it's turret. Turret, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, oh, it is the little turret. But they sound extremely and, similar, yes. so... Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, that is a two identified by Jess and four by Goots. Um, uh, so that point will go to you, uh, to you Goots, um, for recognizing all those robots, <laughs> even Boobo and Tweaky. Yeah, oh, my God! <laughs> Whoa! Um, well, I said something wrong about something you care about, and I'm very sorry. Here are some of our favorite corrections from you, the viewers. At Bet Pokemon says, Um, actually, the animatronics in Five Nights at Freddy's are not homicidal. The phone guy explains to you that when they see you, they think you're an animatronic without a suit, so they stuff you into one. Due to the wires of metal, it would kill you. Now, I don't think that intent has anything to do with homicide, so I think these are still homicidal robots. And from our exclusive Dropout Discord, Glary G says, All three contestants in the Halloween episode claimed that Julia Roberts starred in the movie Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, but she didn't. She played the title role in the movie Mary Riley, which is about the Jekyll and Hyde story told from the point of view of his housemaid. I will give you two points in the body of one point. Parsesis83 says, Um, actually, counting the sector incapable of supporting life, there are 3,601 sectors, as designated by the Guardians of Oa. 3,602, if you count that their own sector is called Sector Zero, when the Guardian Ganthet appoints himself their lantern after the New 52 reboot. Well, I got the number of sectors wrong, perhaps by two. 
Uh, here's a Harry Potter question. The Felix Felicis potion, also known as liquid luck, resembles molten gold with droplets that jump in and out like leaping fish. If taken sparingly, it can make its user generally luckier and more successful at whatever they attempt, as demonstrated when Harry slips it into Ron's drink uh, to... Yes. Um, actually, Harry didn't actually give it to his friend Ron. Uh, he didn't actually slip it into the drink he picked it. That's, that's correct. It was, uh... uh that's right, and yeah. Ron did a great job anyway. Yeah, it's like, yes. you were inside you it all was the, along. the magic was inside Ron, Ron all really along. Cool. Yeah. Also, like, not cool that he, like, pretend to... <laughs> drug <laughs> to drug his friend. <laughs> Very questionable ethics. Yeah. Uh, as most of the series has, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, I didn't even finish the question, uh, but uh, just so you know, sort of in lore, Felix Felix can, can also cause giddiness and overconfidence as a side effect, and is highly toxic in large quantities, which leads me to the question, is this just alcohol? Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. It uh -huh. gives you overconfidence. It's uh, You shouldn't have too much of it. Do they say how you feel afterwards? Do you get... Do you get like a hangover yeah. when you're done? Are you like, is it like an upper and then you feel, you feel depressed oh, afterwards wow. for a couple days? Yeah. There's no way to know because Harry didn't drug yeah. his friend. Yeah. That's true. But he does take it himself later, so. Yeah. When does yeah. Harry take it? He takes it when he uh, has to get the memory from Slughorn. And he's like, oh, I'm going to go visit Hagrid instead of doing the plan. Oh, yeah. that's Remind right. He has a day where he's just yeah. doing everything yeah. he's, he's not like, supposed to do. Yeah. 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 Oh, he has yeah. a day that's like the 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 Spider-Man dancing scene in Spider-Man 3. Yeah. And it's just sort of like, hey! Yeah. Oh. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, that point goes to Maggie. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Are you itching to start traveling again? Even if you're not ready now, why not prepare yourself? Why not learn a new language with Babbel, the number one selling language learning app? From ordering in restaurants to asking for directions to just gaining a deeper understanding of the culture, Babbel makes the whole process of learning a new language addictively fun and easy. With bite-sized lessons you can actually use in the real world, Babbel is a travel essential. I took a lot of different languages. I took Spanish, I took Latin. I don't remember really any of it, if I'm being honest. But Babbel's helping me whip my Spanish back into shape so I can actually use it. That's cool. Babbel's 15-minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. If you've got a few minutes to spare, why not use it to learn something new instead of just wasting time on social media? Unlike your high school language, classes, Babbel designs their courses around practical, real-world conversations, things you'll actually use. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created with the help of over 100 language experts, and their methods are scientifically proven to be effective. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, Italian, French, and German. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation and accent. And there's so many different ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to the lessons, you'll have access to podcasts, videos, games, even live classes. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months free. That's right, that's six months of Babbel for the price of three months. Just go to Babbel.com and use the promo code ACTUALLY. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Use the promo code ACTUALLY to get three extra months free. Now, back to the show. Uh, here's a question about Futurama. In The Problem with Poplars, the Planet Express crew ends up inventing a new fast food craze. They call them Poplars since, according to government records, the only two untrademarked names in existence were Poplars and Tasticles. <sighs> Goots. Um, actually, the other name was Diddlers? Uh, <laughs> incorrect, but you are correct that there, there is another name that was also available to them. It wasn't Diddlers, though. Uh, I'll give you the point unless someone can tell me what the other name was that they could have named Poplars. Um, actually, it was Munchie <laughs> Munchables? No, it was not Munchie. I like that name, though. Uh, Goots. Um, I think actually it was... Um, actually, it was Zitzers. It was Zitzers. Oh. <laughs> Zitzers. Oh. Uh, yeah. I want to give you a quick correction, which is uh, Zitzers and Poplars are the only two names. Uh, oh. Tasticles is something Bender suggests, oh. but it's not actually available. So there's already Tasticles in existence. There you go. There mm. you go. Well, uh, that point will go to Coots. And here's a question about Superman. Red Sun explores a universe where Kal-El crash lands in the Soviet Union rather than Kansas. Superman eventually leads the Soviet Union against American President Lex Luthor, along with Vice President Jimmy Olsen and First Lady Lois Lane. After years of strife and violence, Superman leaves Earth to find Krypton, and Luthor presides over a utopian age on Earth, living for over 1,000 years. 
Jess. Um, actually, Lex Luthor doesn't win. Uh, Soviet Superman wins the day, and <laughs> he loses. Uh, no, no okay. is this, like you can sort of make an argument like it's like well it's more about they they kind of like team up to fight Brainiac. Uh, this, <laughs> am I remembering this? Yeah, uh, they team up to fight Brainiac. So it's like it's like well win lose. It's more of a like kind of come together. But that's not that that doesn't disprove anything that it is in the quest, in the okay. statement. Yeah. Goose. Um. Actually. He doesn't leave for Krypton because it turns out Krypton is Earth from the future. That's correct. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, Whoa. Yes, he ends up just staying on Earth. Uh, and then uh, in the last two pages, we learn that Krypton is just Earth billions of years in the future uh, being torn apart by a giant red sun. And that uh, 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 Superman's father, Jor-El, is actually a distant descendant of Lex Luthor at Lois Lane, who sends his son, Superman, back in time to Earth. Yes. That's uh, really cool. I love the concept cool. of that book. It does feel like those last, like, those last two pages, like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? It's like a Planet of the Apes kind of thing or something where, how does this make sense? Maybe you can answer this. <laughs> yeah. does, how, does that, how does that square with the sort of, like, Superman gets his powers from uh, Earth's sun? Yeah, I think by that time in the future, Earth's sun is a red sun. And sure. then it's the same traditional Superman thing that, like, the Kryptonian race, which is human, has been <laughs> so evolved... That they're essentially genetically Superman anyway, and yeah. then when he comes back, he gets those powers. Uh, well, uh, we thought that would stump everyone, but it did not stump Goots, so that is a point for Goots. And uh, we will move on to our next shiny question of the game, uh, which is called, What's Wrong With This Picture? <laughs> on the other side of this sheet, you will have an image, and there is something wrong with it. The first person who can identify the thing that is wrong will get the point. Go ahead and flip this over. This is a New York Times crossword oh puzzle. Oh my god. Um, actually, there's no uh, questions. <laughs> <laughs> that so would, there's no way to fill it out. That would be an issue, um, but there is there is something else that is wrong here. Hmm, OK, well, even, you know, even, no one else gets it. Even maybe questions that's a not understanding. <laughs> there is there isn't something wrong here. Oh, um, wait. Oh. Um, actually, it's not symmetrical. Uh, yeah, can you be more specific? Uh, it's not a mirror image from left to right. Like they tend to have reversed. There. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. Fine. Close it up. Uh, we, we, uh, so what we were specifically looking for was um, uh, the lack of rotational symmetry, uh, mm. which uh, which New York Times crossword puzzles have, uh, which is if you spin it 180 degrees, uh, it should look the same. Um, th so what is at issue here is there this is little fifth. Oh, little box yeah. of oh, okay. that, that, that doesn't belong there. Um, uh, that that box, uh, that little boxed-in box, ruins the rotational symmetry of a New York Times crossword puzzle, and therefore does not Ooh. belong here. I was really afraid it was going to be that we that this wasn't a crossword puzzle edited by Will Short. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. One of these guys is alive. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He like, never allowed you, <laughs> you don't have the title or anything. He's like, no way was this one edited by Will Short. <laughs> Well, I'm not saying I made a mistake, but I probably did. If you notice something, you can correct us by tweeting at umactuallyshow or by going to our exclusive Dropout Discord and correcting me there. If we like what you have to say, we'll feature it on a future episode, maybe even give you a point. Points are worth nothing. We'll move on to our next question, which is about Star Wars. The first time we see an Imperial walker is during the Battle of Hoth as a group of six AT-ATs, all-terrain armored transports, called Blizzard Force, assault Echo Base. Throughout the series, we see many more types of Imperial walkers, like the AT-ACT, all-terrain armored cargo transport, the AT-AP, all-terrain attack pod, and the AT-ST, all-terrain scout transport, which are also called chicken walkers. Yes. Um, actually, that's not the first time that you see them. Uh, it is, yeah. <laughs> Did you have something else to say? Um, Aren't they in the, um, uh, what the fuck was it? The, uh, the, in another movie, but that chronologically comes before? Oh, so... So I, in the oh, in the time period... In, in uh, you in mean the chronologically in-universe, <gasps> yes. we see 
That is true. Oh my God, that's great. Come on, that's pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> I give the girl a point. Uh, that's, pr- I don't know, I'm really proud of you. <laughs> that's cool. If I could remember, that, what the hell is the name of that movie? I didn't like it much. Rogue, Rogue One. One. Mm. They, you, they have them. Huh? <laughs> I mean, you could make a case that you saw them earlier on the Battle of Geonosis. There were some of the variants and of the walkers. And I saw them so... in the Battle of Geonosis. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, I love it. <laughs> I'm going to give you a point, but only because I'm a doormat. <laughs> no, 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 uh, no. If someone uh, else knows what it is, they uh, should get it. Um, I mean, you're, you are correct that we do see others chronologically. I do say, so what I was trying to puzzle through is I had like, I, I, we phrased the question as we see for the first, uh, as, as mm. that, that the first time we see an Imperial Walker, which mm. would imply the first time that an audience sees it, uh, ra- rather than like uh, the first time someone within universe sees it. Well, how uh, old is the person? Someone might have seen maybe one of these earlier movies sooner. <laughs> maybe someone watching right now. Oh, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> so just to be clear, you're saying that someone, someone a, a child was like, like, you know what, I'm going to watch Rogue One first. Yeah. Then I'm going to... This would be my end to Star Wars, yeah. Rogue One. You never know. Someone out there, they're like, Jess is speaking to me. Rogue One was my first ever Star Wars. <laughs> Jess, I, I, I will give you the point if no one else can, can land on it. How okay. about that? Um, there was only four of them at the battle? Uh, six? no. No. Um, actually, we don't see any more in the series. In the series, we just see the kind of standard one and the chicken walkers. Uh, incorrect. Incorrect. Does Jess get the point? Sure, Jess will give you the point. Doormat, doormat. Uh, what we were going for here is that the mm. ATAP uh, is not an imperial uh, unit. It is a. It is from the prequels, and therefore it is, they are Republic walkers ah. and not Imperial walkers. But they are still uh, walking uh, units. Um, and maybe that was the first time you saw it. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> who's to say? <laughs> who's, to, who's to say? I can't. I can't claim that we all saw the same walkers at the same time. Although we. As a society, maybe saw uh, those AGATs for the first time. <laughs> well, uh, that point will go to Jess. Here is a uh, question around Marvel Comics. The villainous mantle of the Green Goblin has been passed to many people, including Norman Osborn and his son Harry. The current Green Goblin is Harry Osborn's psychiatrist, Barton Hamilton. Before him, the Green Goblin identity belonged to Roderick Kingsley, a ruthless fashion designer. Yes. Um, actually, the Oswalds made the suit. Nobody else was it. Um, they they did have they did take on the mantle of the the, the name Green mm-hmm. Goblin. Oh, so okay. like whether or not they made, like they didn't it wasn't passed on to them, but they did have that title. Yeah. Goots. Um, actually, fashion designers can't be ruthless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I don't think oh, that's oh, true yeah. at all. Someone hasn't seen Woo. The Devil Wears Prada. <laughs> Uh, um, actually, she's uh, the editor of Vogue. She's not, <laughs> not a fashion yeah. designer. So, point. <laughs> <laughs> Any other guesses? Ever? Goots. Um, actually, Roderick Kingsley was the Hobgoblin? That's correct. Oh. Roderick Kingsley was the Hobgoblin, not the Green Goblin, mm. who is a character with the exact same color scheme and same pumpkin-based technology, <laughs> and basically the same in pretty much every way, except Isn't he's he the Hobgoblin. Yeah, he's yeah, orange. Or he's slightly, orange. okay. Uh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> um, well, we'll give that point to Goots, and we'll move on to our final shiny question of the game. I love shiny Ooh. questions. Here's a game called Crunch Time. So on the other side of your boards, there's going to be uh, timelines uh, with little arrows on it indicating um, time travel, uh, like, the, you know, sort of uh, maps, basically, of dates traveled to in time. Uh, it's up to you to see if you can identify the property that we're talking about based only on the dates and times traveled to in the, that specific sequence. So let's go ahead and flip those over. Uh, and these are all movies, I should say. Okay. Give you, give yeah, let's yeah. just give it a Great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Everyone is locked in here, and uh, we will go down the line. Uh, so tell me what you got here. What, oh, what boy. 
Okay, so uh, <laughs> the first one I decided to pick was uh, Looper. Okay. <laughs> this Back to the Future, mm. but uh, that seemed like that must have already happened. I'm sure you guys have already done Back to the Future, so. And one and two and mm. three. Because <laughs> I put The Hours, <laughs> which I have never seen, but I was like, oh yeah, isn't there three different uh, okay. three yeah. different ladies? That seems to be about like the time frame. <laughs> wild, wild west. <laughs> <laughs> and then Galaxy Quest. Mm -hmm. For the 13 seconds earlier, and then I just didn't have anything for the last one. Okay, so cool. Like, Jess, what, okay, what do you have? Okay, here we go. Okay. I got Infinity War Endgame. <laughs> oh, no one can tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, I can't prove you're not right. <laughs> I should have written it for all of them. Uh, back to the Future. Uh huh. Bill and Ted. Uh -huh. uh, back to the Future, a different one. <laughs> 51st Dates. <laughs> oh my god! And Cloud Atlas. 51st Dates oh. is not time oh. travel. She has to learn her day over <laughs> and over again. You have to repeat everything to her. All right, uh, Goots, let's see what you got. Uh, I could not come up with both of these. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't come up with this one. X-Men Days of Future Past for the oh. middle, which I'm not, I don't think that's right either, because I think he ended up back further than 85. The only one I knew definitely was, I think this was Time Cop. Oh my John god. John Van Damme movie. And then the 13 seconds earlier, Galaxy Quest. Yeah. That's all I could come up with. Um, cool. Well, uh, yeah, a lot of stumpers in this one. Uh, th that that 13 seconds earlier is Galaxy Quest. Uh, Maggie and Goots, you both got that right. Good job. Um, fun fact about Galaxy Quest. Um, in the original cut of Galaxy Quest, uh, Tony, um, there's a scene where Tony Shalhoub's character goes into the bathroom and gets high. And um, it was supposed, like his character is supposed to be high the whole time, so which sense. is why he's kind of like, kind of spacey and it's just kind of like, it's like, wow, this is pretty cool, <laughs> right guys? It's just sort of like going along with anything without questioning anything. Um, but they wanted the PG-13 rating and so they, they had to cut that scene in order to do it. But it's, it's very funny because like once you know that and you watch the, the movie again, and you're like, yes, that totally makes yeah, sense. So yeah. that's like a very like interesting uh, choice for a character to be like, eh, I'm just going on a sci-fi adventure and like, I don't know if this is real, but who cares? Yeah. <laughs> um, it's almost funnier as is, I think. Yeah, it just yeah. Like, makes it a character choice. Yeah, he's just this weird, quirky dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then also, Goots, uh, you were correct with Time Cop 2. So uh, that was two correct for Goots, one correct for Maggie. We'll go through the other answers here. Yeah. The first one here is Edge of Tomorrow. Oh, um, right. uh, just caught in that loop forever in 2020. Peggy Sue <laughs> got married. Time Cop, uh, Goots, you got uh, Midnight oh, in Paris. That's right. um, There's uh, time travel? Yeah. I've never seen it. And uh, Galaxy Quest, you got both uh, uh, Maggie and Goots got. And then the last one here is Star Trek First Contact. Ooh. And that point will go to Goots. Well, it is 118. Uh, I think Goots has this locked up. But the last question, as always, concerns Ooh. real life skills. So it is perhaps the most important <laughs> question uh, of the game because it's the only one that actually is valuable at all. It's important to protect yourself if you're going to be exposed to sunlight for any prolonged amount of time. <laughs> Maggie's like, this, very pale. this is my moment. <laughs> I've been training for this day. You shouldn't rely solely on sunscreen. Covering yourself and staying in the shade are important, but knowing what sunscreen to use is important too. A higher SPF means that a higher percent of um, actually, uh, any SPF over 30 does not have any more value. Uh, uh, that is not what we're correcting <gasps> here, Damn. whether or not it's true. Okay. That's exactly what okay. I was going to okay. say. Great, great. A higher SPF means that a higher percent of UV rays will be blocked, allowing it to protect you for longer. You should also make sure your sunscreen is both water resistant and labeled as broad spectrum, which means it protects against both UVA and UVB rays. Yes? Um, actually, it doesn't mean that it protects you for longer. That's correct. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Higher SPF doesn't last any longer than a low SPF. You still yeah. have to reapply mm -hmm. it. Uh, Every uh, 30 minutes. <laughs> um, well, that point will go to Jess. That makes our final score here. One for Maggie, two for Jess, and eight for Goots, making Goots our winner for this episode. Uh, but thank you all for joining us on this episode, and thank you for watching. Join us next time for even more pedantic corrections here on Um Actually. Yeah.